Okay, it's now time to look at our second property we can use on flex containers. And by the way, you can always take a look at the showcase that was attached to one of the previous lectures to also follow along there and also to recap and remember what each of those properties was like. So you can just open up this showcase here, go into let's say flow direction, just to get a reminder of all the values you can have and what that actually does to the layout. And the showcase also more or less reflects the order in which we go through all the properties in the course. So in this lecture, we're gonna talk about justify content and you can always look this one up in the showcase here as well, just to get a quick reminder of the different values you have for justify content and how they affect your layout. All right, so let's go back to our own little page we had here. So we still have our column reverse flow direction and now for this lecture, I'm gonna, let's say, use row reverse here because the property justify content is actually gonna work on the main axis. So in this case now, again, on the horizontal axis. All right, so the property you wanna look at here is called justify content, and there are five different values for this. And the way you can remember this best, I think, is to think about text align. It's actually quite similar. And also the different values you can have kind of remind you of the values you have for text align. So first of all, and also the default is flex start, not flex end, flex start, which is just gonna keep it as it was for row reverse. This is basically gonna justify all the items to the right side. And if I just had row here, then it would be on the left like normal, like the default. So this justify content property here is also what creates this effect, you could say, of having elements floated to the left or right, even though there's no float involved here at all. It's kind of like text align left or text align right. Okay, so now to actually align them to the opposite end of the flex container, or rather its main axis, you can use flex end. So for row reverse, it's gonna look like this, which is very similar to row, but note that the order of the child elements here, the flex items, is now reversed. So we start with four, three, two, one, instead of going the other way around. So you still have this reverse effect here, but the flex items themselves are aligned to the left. All right, now another important one is center, just like text align center, and it does exactly what you would think. But now you might be wondering how you can actually space the items more evenly. So right now, all the four flex items are always very close to each other, but there's actually much more space to use. And this actually is also kind of like text align justify if you think about it, where it spans the whole width of the text width in that case. Now for justify content, there are actually two different ways to space more evenly between the flex items. And the first one is called space around, which is gonna create while well, spacing around all the items. So now each of those, like let's say this one here, has the same spacing to the left as to the right. And then there comes the next item here with the spacing to the left and to the right and so on. But in some cases you may prefer not to have any spacing at the ends here, but rather have them align right at the edges of their container. And in that case, you can use space between, which is very similar, but it removes the spacing here at the start and at the end, or rather I should say at the start here and at the end here, because we're in the row reverse situation. So justify content space between might actually be one of the most important ones because I think it's a very convenient one to have even spacing between the elements and still have all your child elements actually aligned in the overall layout of the site because there are no spacings on the left and right. All right, so those are all the different values you can have for justify content. And now, as I promised, there's a little game online, a really cool site here called Flexbox Froggy at flexboxfroggy.com where you can just learn all those different properties and well, just recap them, try to apply them to some situations to actually get all the frogs here to their lily pads, which are, well, somewhere in this container, in this pond it should be. And it's your task to use the Flexbox properties to get those frogs onto their lily pads. And with only the two properties you've learned so far, you can already do levels one to four. And I very much recommend you do that just to recap everything and not get overwhelmed when we start actually talking about more of the properties that Flexbox provides. Of course, practice is very important, but also your code editor should be a good help 
with the different properties that are available. So like flex direction, justify content and so on, but also with the different values that are actually valid for each of those properties, like row, row reverse, column, column reverse, flex start, flex end, center, space around, space between and so on. So if you can make sure to get one that has some good auto completion for you and can help you with learning Flexbox. But don't worry, if you do all the quizzes and maybe use Flexbox Froggy from time to time, take a look back at the showcase to just get a quick reminder, you're gonna have no problem at all using Flexbox in practice and knowing which properties to use. But if there still is any kind of material where you would say that would be really useful, then just let me know in the Q&A and I'm gonna see if I can create that for you. All right, so that's all about justify content. Again, for me, it's easy to think about this kind of like text align, but you may prefer to think about it another way. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next lecture.